welcome back to my YouTube channel. I wanted to jump on here today to share something. This is for my vegan three course dinner menu. It is perfect for Valentine's Day. We're talking about a delicious salad to start with. It's my strawberry spinach salad. Then we're getting onto my baked ziti. Just feels so cozy and gourmet. And it's also a really easy bake. And then we're gonna be finishing with a really special recipe to me. This is my vegan mousse au chocolat, which is in the Two Spoons cookbook. This is actually the recipe that convinced my husband that we could go vegan. So I think you guys are gonna love it. I'm also gonna show you how you can transition it into a chocolate tart, which really elevates the dish to a whole new level, which is just so perfect for Valentine's Day. Let's get started on my vegan three course dinner menu. So I'm actually gonna start with dessert because this is how I would make it if I was serving a three course dinner. This dessert needs time to chill. You can also make it like one to two days in advance, which is really great. So I'm gonna be sharing that first. I actually make this recipe using tofu. I know, right? Tofu. But when you're using the right tofu, you can make the most amazing desserts. I use it all the time for things like cheesecake. It's in this mousse au chocolat. And I'm gonna show you how to do it today. So I'm gonna start by taking my chocolate and I'm just going to break it up into little chunks. It sounds like my kitchen is like under renovation again. This is as close to using tools as I will ever get. And we're just gonna get that glass bowl. We wanna make sure that it's big enough to fit over a saucepan if you are doing this over the stovetop. If you're doing it in the microwave, it doesn't matter as much. And we're gonna throw this into our bowl. And let's do the second one. That was kind of fun. We're gonna add a teaspoon of coconut oil and let's melt this chocolate. We wanna be careful of the water not getting into the bowl. I picked a bowl that kind of fans out a bit, so we're kind of avoiding that risk. But if you have the boil on too high, then you might risk some of that water spluttering out and getting into your bowl. Um, so just keep that in mind. If water content gets into the chocolate, it's going to affect how silky smooth it is. It's gonna make it kind of weird. I just wanna drink this. When I was a kid, I my mom never bought chocolate bars, so I used to take her chocolate and I would take off a piece and throw it in the microwave and melt it so it was like so ooey gooey and that would be like my secret treat. So you can see this is getting nice and silky smooth. And one of the reasons why it is so silky and shiny is because we've added that coconut oil. If you skip the coconut oil, this recipe is oil free, but you're not gonna get that really nice glistening chocolate that we get when we add that little bit of oil. Okay, this is looking nice and silky smooth. Let's go squeeze our tofu. Okay, so I've got some soft tofu here. I've got two packages. I actually am using the soft tofu, not the silken, because it's easier for me to find at the grocery store. So if you're looking around the grocery store and you're like, where is the silken tofu? You can use soft as well. Oof. There we go. I'm taking my trusty milk bag. I freaking love this thing. I feel like everyone needs this in their kitchen, especially if you're plant-based or vegan, you're gonna use this so much. But again, you can use a kitchen towel if you don't have one, but like $3 on Amazon. I feel like this is a no-brainer. And I'm gonna show you the consistency here. It's really soft. It's almost like a jello-y, like pudding-y consistency. This is what you're looking for. You're gonna pour in your tofu. Now we're gonna take this bag, we're gonna bunch it together, and we're gonna squeeze out some of this juice. Okay, this is looking good. Oh no, why did I do that? Okay, as you can see, I got a lot of water content out there, so I'm gonna pop this into my food processor now. So this is where things get a little bit messy, but just like embrace your inner kid and then after that it's all nice and clean. Plop that in. Now it doesn't look like much yet, but I promise this is not what it's gonna look like when we're done. Things are getting messy. So I'm gonna start by adding the maple syrup, some cocoa powder, sea salt, and almond milk. We're gonna add a splash of vanilla. First, I'm just gonna add the rest of my maple syrup. I just don't wanna miss any of it. And let's add that melted chocolate that we made. Mm. 
Okay, and now we get to see where the magic happens. This is gonna look very different in a few minutes. So we're gonna put on the top and we're gonna blend this. Oh my God, it looks so good. I'm just gonna scrape down some of the sides because the inside looks really blended, but the outside is still looking a little bit rough. I'm like literally salivating, this looks so good. I'm gonna do one more quick mix. Okay, this is looking so good. I'm gonna scoop some out and show you. <laughs> like, look at how silky smooth and gorgeous this is. I've got a little bit of chocolate left in here. I'm not really gonna worry because when I add this to a bowl, it's all gonna mix together, you won't even notice. I'm gonna put it in a clean bowl and we're gonna put this in the fridge for two hours to chill. And I'm gonna eat this one. Mm. We've got my mousse au chocolat chilling in the fridge. This makes a great dessert on its own, but if you really wanna level it up, then you can use it with my level up chocolate mousse tart. This recipe is from the Two Spoons cookbook. I'm gonna include a link below. I'm gonna show you actually how to prepare the tart pan though, because I wanna show how simple and easy it is, and it really just does elevate this dish so much. When you take that mousse au chocolat and you put it in this tart pan, it's sort of like the royal flush of desserts. It just completely takes it to a whole new level. For the base, it's actually really simple we're gonna be using some oats here and some almond flour. We're adding in a little bit of cocoa powder to add that chocolatey richness that we love. And then of course some maple syrup for sweetener. Okay, so I've got my oats here. I'm gonna be putting them into my Vitamix and pulsing them into a flour-like consistency. Usually I use a food processor for this, but my food processor is dirty as you know. So a Vitamix also works on the pulse setting. Cool, right? Look, it's like flour now. Now we're going to add the almond flour and some cocoa powder, some sea salt, and we're gonna pulse this a couple times again to combine. Grab some of the sides of this. It's looking pretty good actually. So we've got our maple syrup and the coconut oil. And we're gonna pulse this again until it becomes like a doughy texture. Now I do find it really helpful to have a spatula here to just kind of bring things together. I also really like doing this in my food processor. My food processor is dirty, so a blender does work, but I feel like the food processor, you just kind of have more room. So let me show you the consistency here. You can see it's almost like a cookie dough. So let's tip out this dough onto my baking dish. And now I'm just gonna push this into the bottom of my tart pan and up along the sides to make a crust. So I'm gonna be pushing up the sides now. And this kind of, this part's kind of fun. It's like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of the times with cooking and baking, you just get to like release your inner child <laughs> and just get like messy and dirty and no one's gonna think you're weird or maybe they will think you're weird, but I won't think you're weird. This part like is a little bit time consuming, but just go with it. No need to rush. Okay, this is looking good. A blind bake means that you're baking a pie with no filling inside. You wanna cook the crust before the filling goes in. I find that like some people use pie weights. I don't think that you need to buy them. I actually have a box. I've never even opened them. I just take a fork and you're just gonna poke the bottom, maybe 10 to 12 holes. It allows for that air to release and then we don't get like these bubbles forming. So let's get this in the oven and we're pretty much done with dessert. Bye. For our main dish, we are gonna be having my vegan baked ZT with cashew cheese sauce. This recipe, <laughs> Penny's eating Penny, can I take this? Come on. She's such an easygoing dog and yeah, then like and then to take like, something oh. from her is like so mean. Okay. <laughs> this recipe is such a great one. I find that it really has this wow factor, but it's made in a baked dish. So like, pretty much very like straightforward and easy to do. We're gonna be using ZT noodles. These are basically like penne noodles, but a little bit bigger. If you're having trouble finding them at the grocery store, I've made this recipe with penne noodles as well. So like totally replace it with that if you want. I'm also adding some plant-based ground to it. It's a really great way to make this recipe protein packed. If you can't find plant-based ground, I feel like most grocery stores have it now, but if you can't, you can skip that step or you can replace it with lentils. Lentils also works really well. So we're gonna start by soaking our cashews. This is obviously going to be the main ingredient for our cashew cheese sauce. So I'm just gonna place this to the side until we're gonna use it. 
We're gonna start by popping up this red pepper. I always like to kind of get the top off and kind of keep it intact. So that way I don't have as many seeds that I have to deal with. So just gonna pull that out and I've got all my seeds here. There's a couple in the bottom which I can just tap out and now it's nice and clean. And we're just gonna chop this into like little cubes, I guess. I also always like to kind of slice them from the inside instead of the, the tough skin because I just find it's easier on my knife. So if you're having trouble with like a dull knife, just try flipping it over and cut into the flesh instead of the skin. If Mitch is like chopping things, I'm like, no, I'll just do it. Like, it's just too, you're too slow. I can't. We do things badly so that the white cup kicks it out the way it takes over. I so honestly that's think that's true. true. I feel like sometimes he purposely so does things badly because then he knows I'll do it. <laughs> so now we just do the onion. I love this technique for cutting an onion. It's just so handy. The layers just like flare out. It makes dicing onions so fast. Okay, we're gonna make this quick tomato sauce. We're gonna be adding some olive oil to the saucepan. Just gonna move this around a bit. Okay, and next we're gonna throw in our onion and the red pepper. Quarter teaspoon of salt. And we're gonna cook this until it's softened. This is gonna take about 10 minutes. This is like music to my ears. It's like, ah, so nice. I feel like it's at this point where like everyone starts coming into the kitchen and they're like, what are you making? <laughs> Another thing I love about my gas cooktop is that things just are so much faster. Okay, so now I'm going to add the plant-based ground. This is gonna add a lot of protein to our pasta sauce, which is great. So I'm just gonna mash this up. It's literally like using ground beef. I'm just using my spoon and kind of playing over here until it's nicely combined. This is looking good and it's smelling good. Okay, let's add in the tomato sauce. I fill this with a little bit of water and then I give it like a little shaky shake and it just gets all the rest out the side so then I get to use it all. We're gonna mix this together and then we have a really gourmet, but like super quick and easy protein packed tomato sauce. Like you could literally just like throw this over noodles and be done with it, but we're not gonna be. <laughs> Savvy. Okay, I'm gonna give it a taste cause I am hungry and be it looks amazing. Mm, so good. So let's boil our noodles. At the beginning, I said that this was gonna be a bake and now you're like, wait, but what? Why are you boiling pasta? We wanna make sure that the noodles are gonna be al dente. Actually, not even al dente, it's like under al dente, just to soften them a little bit. So let's get in our pasta. I feel like part of the reason why I never salt my water is because I just forget. <laughs> Don't message me underneath and tell me I didn't salt my water. I know I didn't salt it. Don't be mad at me. So this, we can put the lid on and we're gonna let this become like close to al dente. <laughs> Hi mom. Okay. This pasta is almost al dente. I'm going to drain it and then we're gonna throw a little bit of the sauce on top just to stop things from like getting sticky and then we're gonna start on. <laughs> I don't really know why I took the lid off because I'm literally going to strain this now, but. Come with me over to our thing. Okay, so this is good to go. I'm just gonna scoop some of this tomato sauce inside and mix it together so it doesn't get too sticky while we wait. So for the cashew cheese sauce, we're gonna start with the cashews. We're gonna add some water, some nutritional yeast, We've got some arrowroot starch, that's gonna be our thickener. Everyone always thinks that this is flour on my Instagram. They're like, why are you adding flour to your food? It's not, it's arrowroot starch. Get with the program. Some garlic, onion, what is this? Garlic powder and some salt. And finally, some fresh lemon juice. That's looking really good. So we're gonna grate the cheese. 
I'm gonna grab my ZT from over by the cooktop. And now for the fun part, we're gonna assemble the baked ZT. Scoop one and a half cups of the tomato sauce into a large casserole dish. Smooth with a spatula into an even layer. Now we're gonna pour in our ZT noodles. You know what, I think it is a little too much. <laughs> Let's just take some out. I think last time I used penne noodles, so maybe because they're tighter, so I should probably change that. Definitely around 7.50 instead of a pound. Do you remember how earlier I said like I used penne when I created this recipe? Well, the penne seems to take up less space. I might actually still take some out. I thought I was done, but I don't like, I might not have enough tomato sauce, so well, at least we have lunch. I'm killing. Okay, we're gonna add the tomato sauce. I'm just gonna use my spatula. Spatula? <laughs> my spatula to get everything in this pan. Just gonna spread this around a little bit. I think I should take some more out or do you think it's fine? Okay. We're gonna add the cheese sauce. This is already looking so yum. And then finally, we're gonna finish with the cheese. Can you ever have too much cheese? No, no you cannot, never too much. This is looking good. I think I'm gonna sprinkle with a little bit of pepper because I think it'll look pretty on top. And then we're gonna put it in the oven. And I'm putting a baking tray underneath and that's gonna catch any overspell. Oh my gosh, this smells amazing. Let's get it out of the oven and let's dig in. Oh my God, I can't wait. Mm. Mm. It's so cheesy, so good. Mm. Obviously don't do this before you serve your menu. I think your guests might be a little bit upset, but mm. Mm. So as the starter to our three course menu, we are gonna be serving my strawberry spinach salad with balsamic dressing. But I'm actually making this recipe last. Obviously we want it to be fresh and it's so quick and easy to throw a salad together. I know when we think of strawberries, it's definitely like an early summer thing and definitely you should be making this in the summertime. But it also feels really on brand for Valentine's Day when we're thinking of strawberries. So I think it's such a perfect opener to like a romantic three course dinner. And then with the chocolate tart, it's like, you got the trifecta, like you got strawberries, balsamic, and chocolate. So I'm gonna show you how to make this recipe. We're gonna start by roasting up our almonds. We're gonna get them nice and toasted. And make sure that you're stirring consistently because these are quick to burn. We're also gonna chop up our veg. We've got some cucumber and red onion that needs slicing. So I'm just gonna be using a half a red onion. I don't need the whole thing, otherwise it's gonna be like way too like, bad breathy, so we're just gonna do a little bit. So I'm just thinly slicing these. Good enough. I'm gonna start crying again. So let's get these in a bowl. I'm just gonna slice up these strawberries real quick. I'm gonna kinda leave them clustered together because I always think it looks pretty when you like fan them out. See, I'm not all only teaching you guys how to cook. I'm also teaching you how I food style. <laughs> I actually have a little tip for how to wash your fruits. It's actually with vinegar, so make sure that you check out my YouTube charts, but basically, you're taking a cup of vinegar and then filling a big mixing bowl with cold water. You let your strawberries soak in that for a few minutes and then drain it, give it a good rinse, and that's how you actually are supposed to wash your fruits. Next, we're gonna prepare the balsamic vinaigrette in a bowl. We're adding balsamic, oil, maple syrup, Dijon mustard, garlic, and salt. And we're gonna whisk that together. Okay, so now we can assemble the salad. I actually love doing it on this plate because it just like opens the salad up and you can really see everything that's inside. I think it's so pretty. It's like a plate bowl, a pool. Okay, we're gonna finish with those strawberries. 
This is just already feeling so Valentine's Day-y to me. <laughs> and then we're gonna sprinkle with the toasted almonds. Pretty. Now you can either dress this salad now if you're planning to serve right away or just leave it at the side and you can dress it when you're ready. Okay, I've gotta give it a taste. Mm. Mm. This is so good. You've got that strawberry, you've got that strawberry bar, balsamic, balsamic. You've got that strawberry balsamic, such a good combo. And then I just love the crunch from the toasted almond. Toasted. From that toasted almond, it's just an amazing combination. This is a salad you're gonna make over and over again. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, this mousse au chocolat is looking perfectly chilled. We can either serve this in a glass cup with a sprinkling of flaky sea salt. I love salt and chocolate together. It is such a gorgeous combination. Or we can actually take this mousse au chocolat and turn it into my level up chocolate mousse tart from the Two Spoons Cookbook. So let me show you how to do this if you really want to elevate your dessert. So I'm literally just going to take my mousse and I'm going to transfer it into this cool down tart, pop it out, and it's ready to serve. So silky smooth and chocolatey. So we're just gonna pop this out of the tart pan. I'm gonna plate it. The chocolate mousse is already so decadent, but that crispy almond base is just, is an unreal combination. Restaurant worthy good. The sea salt topping as well is just so nice with that chocolate. It's one of my favorite combos. So you don't really need to get all fancy with the toppings if you don't want. No one would ever know that this was made out of tofu. Okay, so there we have it, my vegan three course dinner. An absolutely perfect thought out menu for Valentine's Day. Really bringing in that wow factor and a lot of color as you can see. I feel like each dish as a standalone is so elevated. You're really gonna blow people away. And it's not only perfect for Valentine's Day, you could totally make this for entertaining a crowd if you really want to impress. And everything's pretty easy to put together. So I really hope that you like it. If you do, make sure that you give it a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and let me know what you think in the comments below. What's your favorite? What you think about the tart? I'd love to know. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.